All right, everybody, welcome back to another episode of Swedenborg and Life. Today, we are going to wade into the topic of who or what is Jesus Christ. Our topics will be what slash Jesus is, the universal name, and the Lord. It's hard to think of any historical figure with an impact on the human race as large as that of Jesus Christ. And it's a polarizing legacy. To some people, Jesus is the center of their lives, while others have all kinds of negative associations with that name. And interestingly, Jesus is often a dividing line in the spiritual versus religious discussion. People within traditional Christianity are often skeptical of reports of -of out-of-body experiences, auras, and spirit contact, while people who are enthusiastic about those kinds of things can come to see the Bible and Jesus as something with little to offer. Swedenborg paradoxically said yes to all of the above. Here was a guy who meditated, reported daily contact with the spiritual world, could see auras and representations in nature, wrote that all religions could lead to heaven, and yet somehow centered his entire worldview on Jesus. We're going to take a little time here today to start to look at how that works. Stay tuned. All right, we're back. It's Monday again. Thanks, everyone, for joining me. Uh, I thought it would be a fun topic, what we're talking about today, and we'll see how the whole thing pans out. There's a couple reasons for going with this one, and we'll get to those in a minute. My, once I introduce everybody, my name is Curtis. I'm with the Swedenborg Foundation, who is a nonprofit that tries to get Swedenborg's ideas out into the conversation. And with me, we have friend of the show, Dr. Jonathan Rose, who is the series editor of the NCE Translation. Swedenborg's works. Thanks for coming back on the show, Jonathan. Thanks for having me. Great to see you. Um, and so I thought we could chat about this, and two reasons initially popped into mind. One is that it's about to be Christmas. That's right. Um, uh, and Christmas is often associated with Jesus Christ. For some reason. Yeah. yeah. And then also, uh, serendipitously, you and your team have published this, which is a, a little short work written by Swedenborg that deals entirely with Jesus Christ. When you see the Lord, as this is called, written by Jesus, uh, written by Swedenborg, it's about Jesus. That's right, right. Um, so those two things coming together, I thought we could maybe take a look at this whole phenomenon because as we were setting it up, like a lot of people have heard of Jesus, a lot of people have all these opinions about him. Where does he fit in with Swedenborg? And as you were mentioning before the show, it's really a unique take on the the Jesus phenomenon. Yeah. So let's let's structure it a little bit. We'll get Oh, before we get there, let's uh we want your voices in here obviously as always. Leave your questions and comments and we'll get to them in the second half of our show. Uh, so if there's anything we don't cover, let us know. Okay, let's get to our first topic for discussion. All right, so we labeled this first one, what God slash Jesus is. And so we want to get a little into, you know, Swedenborg obviously, you know, was somebody who acknowledged the phenomenon of Jesus Christ. And this is something important, but what exactly is that? So I want to open it up with this quote from Swedenborg, and we can go from there. This is from his book, True Christianity. The Father means the divine nature as an origin. The Son means the divine human nature that came from that origin. And the Holy Spirit means the divine influence that radiates out. These are three aspects of one God. Another way of putting it is that the Father's divinity means something like the soul in us. The divine human manifestation means something like our body, which comes from our soul, and the Holy Spirit means something like our actions, which come from both our body and our soul. Then we see three essences that belong to one and the same person. Together they form one indivisible essence. Okay, so that, that's our opening salvo. So there's, he's talking about the Christian idea of the Trinity and putting sort of a spin on it where he, he equates the, the Trinity to kind of the body, soul, and actions in us. So uh, what do you have to say to that? There was a lot in that quote. And um, the first thing that comes to mind is I think that word indivisible is so important. What I think Swedenborg did in trying to come to understand so many people, whether you're in Christianity or outside of Christianity, wrestle in some way with who is this Jesus yep. if he's nobody or if he's a mere human being why is he so famous and billions of people celebrate his birth every year uh, but th- there's just mysteries about it how does he relate to God and you know what does it say in the Bible and so on uh, what Swedenborg did as a philosopher 
uh, was look at the indivisibility. He looked at the qualities of God, and he said that the, the qualities of God are particularly um, omnipotence, meaning all-powerful, omnipresence, meaning that he's everywhere, right. and omniscience, meaning that he's all-knowing. Mm-hmm. Now, those so he's three... really ticked off some important boxes there. That's right. And those three qualities... Uh, have the, if you think about omnipresent, let's take omnipresent. Right. Uh, picture in your mind the whole universe, and then picture a sheet of paper that goes to infinity in every direction. It never ever stops. Oh, I no do matter, this all the time anyway. Uh, so. Yes, right. It's it's very relaxing. Uh, no matter how far it goes, it never stops. Well, how would you divide that piece of paper in half? Yeah. There's there's no half. Well, you, you know, just get to the end of it, and then you start cutting, <clears throat> right? <laughs> right. There's no end, and so you don't know where the middle. You know, there's no end, yes. no beginning, and and uh, so how would it's indivisible? That's yes. an essential uh, thing to understand about the nature of divinity with human beings. When you have a father and a mother, and then they have a child, that child is a separate individual, as we all know, fr- from the parents. They mm-hmm. may have certain characteristics of the parents, but they have their own will, their own thoughts, their own worldview, and yeah. so on. And it's just and separate. Where the parent is, the child is not. You know, they can't occupy They're not, the they same space. They cannot occupy the, exactly the same space. That's mm-hmm. right. They're in t- two different spaces. Uh, but with God, it's different. Um, so can I ask for that graphic oh, to yeah. go up? We, about, a, we, um, we put a lot of money into this. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> it's just beautiful, isn't it? See, I think people think somehow that the infinite, uh, like you have God, and then God got together with Mary in the, okay, this notion so of the virgin birth. So here we're getting at the, uh, the Christmas story. Right. right. This and, idea and where that, did Jesus yeah. come from? Okay, in this graphic we got infinite A plus finite X on the top. That's right. And I, what I think some people, th- Christians think may have happened was that there was infinite A, infinite being A, got together with a finite being, meaning Mary, Mary right. and then had infinite being B, you know, the Son of God, or as okay. if that was yep. a totally different being. Uh, but if you realize that the infinite is indivisible, it doesn't work this, you know, mm-hmm. you can have an infinite number of finite beings, yes. but you can only have one infinite being. There's, there's yes, only one right. infinite. You can't have multiple infinites. And so what is the way Swedenborg sees Jesus is that there's infinite A, which is God, plus finite X, which is Mary. Yeah. That comes together to create a being who is infinite in A on the there. inside because yeah. you can't have an infinite B. There's no such thing. And this is Swedenborg saying that there's, uh, you know, that the soul of Jesus is this the divinity but the body it came from Mary. So this that's is right. sort of and this so, fusion of of infinite and finite and that's this box we see in the graph. That's right. In 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 that quote that you had before it said that it was like our soul that we have in, in in us and then Jesus was like the body of that same you know it's not a separate yes. person. Yes. Uh, you know there's been a thought over time that that there must be three gods up there in some ways or three persons of the godhead right uh, but sweden works no you can't you know philosophically you can't divide that so jesus and, christ as a person is god inside a body that's right god inside not, a human not body. a separate so this is god inside it's a, a body. very wild thought yeah. can we go back to that graphic yeah. i don't know if that's possible uh, but yeah. the idea of having the infinite on the inside and then finite on the outside is like it, it's like putting a jet engine on a on a you know a, Rollerblades or something, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, how do you have those two things connected to each other? Yeah. Um, over time, uh, what Swedenborg believes happened is that if we go to the next graphic that goes yeah. along with this, that infinite on the inside transformed the finite and made it infinite, and that's why Jesus is said to have disappeared from the tomb. Right. The, uh, the whole flesh, everything, just poof, you know, it, it was gone. It all rose up. Uh, I think that's a very interesting account of what's at the heart of Christianity. I yeah, think so and he's it's t- different than what you hear elsewhere. Right, and he's saying that there was a process. Everything is according to order. Spiritual right. world, physical world, all that. So there was a process there in which God, who is omnipresent, was somehow um, present in a different way You know, inside this body of a person, yes. experiencing life as a person. And through that life and through transformation, the same sort of spiritual path we go on, but this was God doing it on a divine scale, he was able to uh, make divine even the body. And that that you have this this matter acting in ways matter can't normally act, but according to the laws of order. That's right. And and that's why... uh, Jesus says things that would be crazy for a normal person to say, like, I am light itself, you know, I am life, 
uh, I'm the resurrection of the life. You know, he says things that, that, that are hard to reconcile with just being a mere human being right. like you and me. Uh, I think that infinity that was inside there helps to ex- explain what was going no on. No one comes Christmas. to the Father except through me. And so the Father is the soul. That's you know, right. Coming to it through the, through the body or through, through what you body. can interact with or the finite version of it. So, and I would say the same of you. When I, when I try to you know, uh, touch base with you, I want to communicate with you. I don't go into a seance and try to raise your soul. Yeah. Oh, Curtis, oh, Curtis. Thank you. You know, I find your body and I go through the body. You know, yeah. I, the only way to get to Curtis's soul is through right. Curtis's body. So that's and com- conversely, uh, you know, if you're asleep, if we're, if we're doing this show and you fall asleep, which happens during yeah. the break sometimes, yeah. and I, I can't communicate with you till the body wakes up. So there's got to be true. both kind of working in tandem there. That's right. All right, so that's, that's our way too brief initial for this is sort of what is the phenomenon it, it, at least it's light fair you know yeah it's, it's, yeah, just, yeah. it's, it's not just, a very big topic no, no, not but a what thing. we want to try to do here to you guys at home is is explain a little bit of what's the phenomenon of jesus what is that in swedenborg's worldview it's it's not that it's not uh this a son a separate god that this is like this is god in a form you could walk up to and, and give a hug or shake his hand you yeah. know so now we're going to take a look in our next section of you know why just jesus so let's go to our next uh, segment. Because if I was watching this show, I might say, okay, so there's this whole history of exclusivity with the Christian tradition. Yes. You know, it's like, hey, man, you're not a Christian, you're going to go to hell. Uh, you, and Jesus is the only way. And Jesus will say things like, "I'm, you know, right. I am the way, the truth, and the life." So, if that's how can this Jesus thing be so central to everything? What about everybody in China before Jesus is coming? I mean, there's all this whole civilization. Did they not connect with God? And what about everybody since then who hasn't hasn't known Jesus or you know had a bad taste in their mouth about Christianity? You know, how is this universal? So I want to get into what what is we're calling this segment the universal name. So let's take a look at uh, this this first quote. This is from Divine Providence. Um, some could point out that some people do not know the Lord. And again, when Jesus, when Swedenborg means Jesus, he says the Lord. That's right. So some people do not know Jesus, and that, that apart from the Lord, there is no salvation. But no one is saved because of knowing about the Lord. Mm. We are saved because we live by his commandments. Mm. Further, the Lord is known to everyone who believes in God because the Lord is the God of heaven and earth, as he tells us in Matthew twenty-eight eighteen and elsewhere. Particularly, people outside the church have more of a concept of a personal God than Christians do. And this is Swedenborg critiquing the Christian church of his time. That's right. And people who have a concept of a personal God and lead good lives are accepted by the Lord. Unlike Christians, they believe in God as one in both person and essence. Further, they think about God as they lead their lives. They treat evils as sins against God, and people who do this are thinking about God as they lead their lives. In that last sentence especially, people who don't do evil things are thinking about God. Not, I almost could read that as, you know, if, yeah, if you're not doing bad things, whether you even realize it or not, you're thinking, you're connecting with God, with this, this Jesus thing, right? That's right, that's right. And it gets down to, you know, people will cite that those biblical things that you have to believe in his name or that right. there's no other way to get to the Father except yeah. through him. Oh, do some and, people cite that? Yes. I, I met and, those people. And, and, so have you, have you? <laughs> and and they, so they cite that idea of the name. Yes, the name uh, of Jesus is important. Swedenborg has a very, very interesting take on that. There's a lot of biblical passages about the name. Uh, it's apparent sometimes that you can see that the name actually means the quality, as it does in this world. If you said, mm-hmm. well, you know, how many names do we have for that Supreme Court justice seat or something? You know, you're right. talking about qualities that people have that would be good enough. You know, we have a few good names. Yeah, you know, exactly. Kind of don't, don't soil my good name or something yeah, like that. Yeah, that's right. The name means the quality. And uh, so if you see it as the quality of love and wisdom, which are the highest human qualities, uh, that's what it's talking about. It's not talking about knowing, I mean, Jesus is somewhat different in different languages. Or what, you yes, know what I mean? It's right, just right, uh, right. might be spelled different ways. Or that something, particular you know, word is You're not, not talking essential. about a word in English or something. Mm-hmm. You're talking about the quality of love and wisdom. And that as people live their lives, uh, if they're living a godly life in whatever religious tradition they're part of, what Swedenborg is saying there is that they are having a personal interaction 
with that God, you know, that is who Swedenborg would call Jesus that they're interacting with, whatever, it doesn't matter what the, you know, it doesn't matter what English letters or letters yes. in whatever language right, right, they right. use as a name for that. The quality is the, is the name that, that is important. Jesus is the embodiment of the, as you said, the highest qualities, love and wisdom, because God is love and wisdom. And That's those right. come together and, and we can, you know, it, so, it sounds like, oh, love and wisdom, these are just sort of esoteric, like, I mean, no, th those are living things and you meet those and you can talk to those and that's what Jesus is and that you can have this the relationship is with those qualities. So if you're in your life and you're basically loving the rest of the human race, you, you don't realize it, but just in the feelings of that, in the nuances, in the actions, you are interacting with that part of the divine. So you're building That's right. that relationship. And when we feel compassion for somebody or we hear a story on the news and it sort of makes our heart break a little bit, we are feeling that quality. Yeah. You know, we're having an interaction with, with that quality of compassion. Yeah, so it's like a both, and that's universal. That's in all the religion. That's in all. The, yeah. all the people on earth have access to that. It's like a both. It's a both and sort of thing. like the the Christian tradition and these stories about Jesus. These can be incredibly potent, and that Swedenborg spends you know so much time you know teasing out the meaning of the the Bible stories. It's very important, and it can be a, a, a rocket ship to get you into this spiritual path. Yeah. However, it's not only that you can find the path in other places as well you can even be interacting with that same thing yeah. in other places as well so that's that's something that you know obviously we haven't conveyed the full thing of today but something i wanted to try to communicate a bit of to you guys at home is this this fusion that swedenborg represents of this like really really detailed um understanding of jesus and that this is so central right, but yet right. It's not, you don't have to be there to be connected to God. So um, hopefully we've confused you enough that you'll try to go <laughs> sort it out on your own and get it right. So let's just quickly before we end, talk a little bit about the book, The Lord. All right. This is an important book from this angle. Keep going. Uh, that um, uh, what Swedenborg does in here, particularly for, because whenever you bring up Jesus, uh, the Bible's not far behind for a lot of people, right. and people who are Bible-based, which I am myself, uh, you want to know, well, wait a minute, how does that fit with Scripture? Isn't exactly. there a Scripture that speaks against that? Or so something? you guys might be watching this show and saying, like, okay, who is Swedenborg? You know, some people might be tuning into the show and saying, like, Jesus, I don't like Jesus, why are we talking about Jesus? Other people might be tuning in and saying, who are you to say all the, make up all this stuff about Jesus? The Bible right. tells you about yeah, Jesus. Yeah, the Bible so, yeah. Continue. That's right. And so this this book is just it's just a slender book of just over a hundred pages, but it's full of scriptures where he's laying out the case for this one God. And he uses both the Old Testament, which is interesting, the Hebrew scriptures, uh, uh, and the and the New Testament, the Greek scriptures, to make a case for this oneness and the fact that Jesus is the only God. He uses that passage in Matthew the, where Jesus says, "All power has been given to me in heaven and on earth." To you know, as kind of a centerpiece of of what he's talking about, it's it's awesome stuff. It's it's deep, but he's he's got real scriptural uh, foundation in there. Yeah. So if you really want to dig into this, you might be interested in this book. Go to Swedenborg.com. You can download it for free, or you can order a nice paperback like this. We'll try to put a link at the at the description of this show, so you can get your hands on it if you want to get into it more and more. For now, though. Let's hear, what do you guys think about this whole phenomenon? Did we, was that intelligible, what we were saying? Um, how would you upgrade it? And, and what would you like to know? What would, what's your input? We'll get to our questions right after this quick video break. All right, now it's time for the most exciting segment of the show, the questions part where we get to hear what's on your mind and hopefully, you know, go into avenues and areas of the discussion that we missed initially. So let's see what everybody's saying and feel free to jump in, you guys, anytime and ask more questions, leave more comments. So let's see our first one. This is from Esteban. Sorry for saying this. Sometimes I think Jesus had schizophrenia, a God who's praying to God. Mm -hmm. Hey, man, that's, like that. that's legit because it, it does, it does. So we're, we're sitting here, Jonathan Rose and I, saying like, uh, hey, man, you know, it's all one God. It's all one God. But if you read the stories of Jesus, if you take those to be true, yeah. he certainly is, um, hey, you know, that would be like like me saying, okay, Curtis, 
I'd really like some pizza. You know, that that does seem a little bit like not something you want to model yourself after. Right. So what do you uh, think? If we, I don't know if we can go back to that first graphic with the infinite and the finite on there, but I'm sure okay. people can remember it anyway. The um, if you picture a being that has infinity on the inside and is finite on the outside, Jesus' consciousness, Swedenborg says, was alternating back and forth. Sometimes he was conscious of that infinity inside. Yes. And that's when he would say, the Father and I are one. Right. Or he'd say, before Abraham was, I am, which is, you know, really mind-boggling yeah. kind of thing to say. Not a very finite thing to say. But when he was conscious of his finiteness and his frailty, that's when he's praying to the Father as if it's something separate from right. himself. And we and we can take that down. Yeah, we mimic we mimic that journey in that people will say like, oh, I was you know I was not my best self. I was, and you just see in life that you vacillate between. Oh, yeah. Okay, I'm really plugged in. I'm living by sort of my highest ideals to like oh, I'm just out of control, you know. Um, and and that that we're going through something, and he was going through something similar. And you can and Swedenborg kind of divides up all the these Jesus passages into. Uh, what ex and initiation and that's right. The, I don't know emptying the, out emptying and glorification, out. and you can yeah. see that there's some where he's all like, "Oh yeah, I'm I'm with it," and the others he's not. So he was going through a larger version of the journey that we go on. And if you follow, uh, if you're so unfortunate as to love a sports team and follow yeah. how that sports team is doing, you can get. You help. will see times when they are in their glory in <laughs> what they're doing, point. and other times when they are useless and they can do nothing, yeah. and. Uh, uh, so there's a kind of order there. We all go through that. We all have days where we're we're so you know sharp and focused block. or at a great point, and then sometimes you can't even you know find your keys or know you know like, like remember what paper is or how yeah. anything works. That would never happen. The the keys losing. Thing. No, no, no. <laughs> not to one of us. No, today. Not to one of us. We're not going to say no. who. Um, okay. So let's. <laughs> thanks, Esteban. This is a great comment. Let's get to our next one. Roger, so why did God come to earth? Why, why was it necessary? Mm. And so I had, a, that's a great question, Roger, and awesome. I had initially said to Jonathan when we were playing this show, we just can't get into that because it's, it's too long, but let's nutshell it if we can. So why? Do you want me to give it a go? Yeah, yeah. Um, it had to do, uh, this may be a little, um, I don't know how this will come across, but it had to do with being able to address evil but do it safely without blowing the evil away. It would be like, the power of the sun trying to deal with something on the far side of the earth. You know, the the sun can't get close to the earth. It'll cook the whole thing. Yes. But by having this earthly being that could go around the far side, it could, but has the sun inside it, it could bring that sun into the darkness without killing everything in, in sight. Uh, that's kind of a short story. Yeah, but that, um, so there was, there's this problem. Swedenborg, if you look into Swedenborg's kind of view of consciousness, he says that it's almost, it's all this sort of interconnected web, you know, that, that people that you die and you go to the afterlife and you're either, you know, you know, helping out the good side or the bad side. And that affects the kind of thoughts and feelings people get here. And that at the time when Jesus was coming, it was so, uh, there was so much negativity that it was uh, overwhelming. People couldn't, and that part of what it was, was, yeah, E, that that same evil couldn't be God couldn't come and deal with it like you're saying because you just it's too much power. But since he had this human side to him, this side where he's forgetting at times, he can be attacked by doubts and fears and and all the kinds of stuff that comes after us. But because it was coming after him and he had this core inside him, then he could uh, you know cook it to the, to the right. point where he could push it back. And so you know it's probably you know and and by doing that yeah. he he got he didn't deal with it all for all time you know some people think he just like eliminated the possibility right, of right, sin right, or something. Right, right, right. no he just got the power to be able to help all of us when we we're struggling yes uh, and you, there are certain scriptures that speak to that but, and the, you know. the way that swedenborg is describing the the spiritual world and god all this stuff it's complex it's as complex right. as the physical world you know if we're sitting here like okay why did the big bang happen well it was because there was a singularity <laughs> and then everything was pushing out yeah, like that's right and it, like uh, first of all i'm not an expert in it second of all it's very complex and we can guess and that it's it's not just like uh okay well god did it for this and this is that the yeah. we're describing some of the general things we Swedenborg reported, but it would all, you know, it all has to do with the machinery of, of human minds, how that works, uh, how the entirety of reality. So it's, it's it, we're just poking a little bit at it, um, but it, but it has that complexity behind it. Yes. I just feel like it's worth mentioning that's because right. we're giving these sort of like nuanced, weird explanations. But that's just how life is: is nuanced and weird. If you ask somebody why does a, an engine work or something, there's right. all this weird complexity to it. Yeah. So great question, Roger. Let's get to our the next one. It is from Marsha. 
on Facebook, why did Jesus have to sacrifice himself? Which, you know, why, yeah, why is there so much, um, why is there so much pain in that story? And I've kind of liked opening with you so that I don't have to think of it. So <laughs> That's good. <laughs> would you mind? I, I, I would love to. There's some passage in Scripture where Jesus says, I have power to lay down my life and I have power to take it up again. Uh, and it's if you look at the crucifixion story, he does not go like a victim into that circumstance. Uh, what he needed to do there, he, that was part of his purification process. And so he took that on, all, all the hatred, and he maintained love. He was loving through that whole thing. Right. Uh, that was transforming him. And so he, will, he knew that that was the whole reason he came into this world, was to go through that moment of transformation. Uh, again, I don't want to get into other ideas. There are sort of a lot of mistaken ideas about what Jesus was doing it's when he was on the To appease the anger of God. That's right. If he is God, there's no other God who's angry. You know? Yes. So that doesn't make and sense. And then you get into sort of the issues of, whoa, like why would that make you less angry? When, when people's children are killed, they don't generally get less angry. You know? Yes, so, that's right. So there's a whole... Yes, that's you know, right. There's a, whole, that, that, there's a lot and of sort of... The transformation that he... That he went through was complete that was the final stage it was the final test it was like a, a a challenge or something like the trials that we go through and the uh the result of that was his complete transformation you know that yeah. was the end of his transformation and you mentioned the trials that we go through and this is another topic i'd love to do for a show but swedenborg calls uh tests or temptations or trials you know there's a couple of different words people yeah. translate it with that we basically we are improved spiritually through struggles and if you've had a life you know that we we struggle hard things happen but and it's generally sort of thought of that those build character and that this is how you really de right. develop empathy and compassion and humility and kind of have your uh you know self-aggrandizement kind of cut it, it down can be transformative and the these. harder an experience it you know some people have been through just the worst thing you can imagine if you said if you had it to do over again would you do it again and yeah. they'd say well it was it cost me everything that i cared about but I can see that it really blessed me in the long run. Yeah, you because you understand so you understand some of the nuances of what's gained through that. So Swedenborg says that's how we're moved from sort of the hellish mindset to a heavenly mindset, and that that Jesus is following the same path. And that that's this right. I was just reading There's in this book to it, the, in this book the other day uh, I was just reading um, that the the cross well, that was the final struggle that there you had that's like right. taking on this huge amount of evil and you had this pain at the same time and that this that was what was necessary to, to make this connection finally and his staying in love through that whole experience in, yeah uh, and still forgiving everybody and still being loving yeah uh, what he passed the test yeah I, if I if I bang my head on something, I'm done. Like I don't I don't love that cabinet anymore. So it's a tough thing to do. Oh, it is. Um, he's he, the only one. He's that good. Do it. Give him props where where he deserves. That's right. Um, okay. So thanks very much for that question. Let's take a look at another. This is from Chuck Blair 100 on YouTube. Why do you be, believe Christ had to be born as a baby? Why didn't he just zap in? This is a great question, Chuck. What? Why didn't he just zap in as uh, you know a fully grown? And then mm. wouldn't that impress people more? You know, like wow, right. you're already here. You didn't do any of that. You must be divine. I'm gonna yeah. before I throw it to you, as is our custom. I'm gonna say order. Uh, everything is done. I was blabbering about order before. God doesn't just God doesn't work outside the system. God is the system. You want to make a, a human being, you come through the channels of order, which human beings are made through. And you just think about it. You know, physically. You got to have the right environment to assemble a baby, and God has designed all these environments, and so that that's what I'm going to start with. And then, can you please fix it? Yeah, they the no, that's great. And the um, uh, there's a lot to this, and Swedenborg gets way way into it. Uh, but basically, it has to do with that there had to be a mind that was built up, and that's how minds are built. Yeah, I mean, it's the same path we go through in a sense that there's a there's a soul that builds your body in the womb. Uh, but we don't know anything about it. You have to be born and develop a mind, and then bit by bit your mind starts to become one with that soul that's in there. It's, that's all going through too much at one time. But uh, that's what Jesus had to follow, the same order that we all follow, partly because he was showing us here's how that works, and he was showing how even the worst things, all the pain and the craziness that we go through can be transformative. There's a way of holding it yeah. where it can be transformative. So he went through, you know, he was not, he wasn't... Uh, 
you know, speaking six languages at the age of six months or what, you know, yes. he, he was a baby. He was a drooling little baby and he did the stuff that babies did uh, because yeah. that's the order of it. He built up his mind through that. It's something, there's so much in there about this, this is a template. This is something yes. that allowed, because it's sort of It's not an accident that we go through, right. you know, teething and teens and so on, you know, that, like that's this is, part this of the is order. The holy journey that we're on, you know, the, the, this, the, the sequence and the progression, there's just a meaning in it. There's the meaning of the universe in it. And so yeah. he was going through that same system because that's where we all are and that's where he could get the work done. So th those are a few thoughts on it. Thank you very much, These are Chuck. awesome questions. Yeah, 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 you guys, are, you guys are doing great, as you always do. Let's take a look at another one. This is from Zen Soul. I think Jesus is what being the embodiment of love and wisdom is, and that way any person can be Jesus. However, when people judge and condemn people in the name of Jesus, what is actually... That is actually going against what Jesus is. What do you guys <laughs> think? Well, you you saw before that Swedenborg was saying actually, you know, outside the Christian church, there's a lot of people who are more connected to the to Jesus than than inside. And because he was, you know, there was you know theocracy in in Europe at the time. It was really like we think we have it bad now if somebody pickets, you know. But like things were really intensely bad yeah. from the Christian church then. And and it, so there's plenty of very good Christians. Who, who have a genuine connection to, to love and, and are some of the nicest people and genuine connection to Jesus Christ. But you also get what, what he's referencing, which is people who are say, oh yeah, I'm, I'm Christian, I love Jesus, and, and you're going to hell, and acting really nasty. Um, and th there's this disconnect, as he's pointing out, of like, you might be in touch with the name of Jesus, but as of the qualities of love and wisdom, which he's saying can show up in anyone, which, you know, you know, Swedenborg would say, that's, that is Jesus with you, those qualities in you, you know? That's right. Um, that, that's, that's the real connection there. Yeah, and Jesus says, the works that I do, you will do also, because I go to my Father, and greater works than these will you do. Um, I messed up that quote, but you know the gist of it. We'll, we'll fix it in uh, post. That's, that's right. <laughs> the, um, uh, I think that is the vision, is that the process that Jesus went through now the, I don't think we, I don't think we become uh, the infinite God or what. There's only one infinite. Sure. But we are Too vessels for that, and so then you can get an unlimited number of people who are vessels for that energy of that love and wisdom and compassion. Yeah. What a tremendous world this has the possibility of becoming uh, through that presence of, of you know. Being yeah. one, if Jesus says what He wants is is not to sort of be near us, be in us, and we're in Him. That's that's the yeah. that's the goal. And this is sort of that only through Jesus are people saved, which is only through love and wisdom. You know, yeah. in inside you right. are you saved to, from ego, from compassion, it. Yeah, humanity, yeah. All, yeah. all those kind of qualities. So, that's right. And we're going to be for our correspondence mm. thing today in a, in a minute or two. We're going to be talking about glass and how that lets light through. Oh, really? And that Swedenborg cool. yeah des describes heaven as you know angels are people who are letting God th come through them to do things. So that's cool. Let's take another one. Uh, these are fun. So this is Mike Blackbird. Christ was not his name, but more his title. Am I correct? Christ did consciousness, for example. So. Absolutely. Yeah. That's right. Christ means the anointed, and, and uh, that is more of a title. His, his name was Jesus. Uh, Christ was a title, meaning the anointed one. And what does Jesus mean? Jesus means Jah saves. Jah is the Old Testament God, is the Savior. And that's, that actually speaks to our point tonight, too, that he was wearing a name that said, I am the Old Testament. You know, I'm the, I'm the Old Testament yeah. God. I am the Savior. People often divide those. Think of the angry God in the Old Testament, the nice God of Jesus who came here. Yeah. But his name said, well, no, I'm, I'm both. I'm, I'm, I'm Jaw saves. And that gets a little into correspondences and Swedenborg's interpretation of the Old Testament and that you know, it seems like God is angry there, but this is actually talking about the inner life of human beings and of Jesus Christ. And That's right. So it's a, there's a lot of books on it. If you can see in Jonathan's shot, there's a bunch on the bookshelf back there. There's a lot of material there, so there's a lot of nuance to it. There it is. Um, that's like a quarter of Swedenborg's books behind Jonathan. <laughs> uh, okay, so great, great, great thought. Let's, let's take, uh, we'll take a few more here. Um, this is Drive-By Poet on YouTube. What's the significance of the crucifixion and the cross? What does Jesus mean when he's on the cross and he says, why have you forsaken me? Mm. So that's a great one. And I, what I would imagine, based on our conversation here so far, is that there you have kind of the, the epitome of this I'm not feeling connected to God state that we were mentioning before, um, where, it, where he's not really just feeling like it's, it's all I, I'm, I'm losing. 
that I'm in, I'm suffering and I'm losing, yeah. which is a state. I I feel like we get to that state. You yeah. Know, of like what? That's right. Where are you? Uh, like what? And you know, not even necessarily asking that of God, but just what was happening. You know. Yeah. So so that's that's one significance I see. Do you have? Yeah. More? Yeah, I think that's awesome, and I, I see it as the final moment of separation. It's an amazing moment of agony, and I think it's gen- genuine. You know, it's genuine agony and suffering. Uh, have you ever had that experience where sometimes when you hit total despair about something in your life, uh, actually you're only a little way away from that being solved? Yeah. You know, but when you fight, look, it's impossible. I have knocked myself out. I cannot get there from here. You know, I, so I think it was the embodiment of that state. It, he was on the on the verge of this total unity, uh, um, and yet he feels completely separate. The other factor that I think a lot of people don't realize about that is that he was just quoting Psalm 22. That yeah. whole thing is Psalm 22. So he's actually up there on the cross quoting scripture you know that's what he's doing yeah. he's not just sort of speaking in his own voice but he's quoting scripture psalm 22 is all about despair it it sort of goes into the psychology of the crucifixion yeah. from the inside and so it's sort of got this hip uh you know i don't know well, sort like, of yeah, scriptural. I, know. I, I shouldn't you know i don't know it was a very intense moment in human history uh, but i love the fact that he's he's still all about the bible he's still mm-hmm. all about you know well, the, and the, there's, it's, Swedenborg says that the spiritual world, the afterlife is actually, instead of space, you have states of mind there. Mm. Um, and if Jesus is in that state, you know, that, that despair that mm. we come to, um, and he's doing God, his, the God work in there, then when we're in that state, we can be benefiting from what he did. That's so there's right. some kind of connection there. And I do see what you're saying about this, like, oh, the despair, and then something good happens. Um, we have a a very talented animator named Matt who does graphics for these shows mm. and back when we were making videos I remember if I saw him like oh I don't know what to do next I'd be like we're about to get this something great yeah, right. we would go through that <laughs> cycle get good. Um, so yeah, okay right. I think we have like two more we're gonna get to um, yeah okay this is Mark on YouTube if Jesus wasn't crucified would he have grown old and died of natural causes wow uh, you know mm. yeah and does he ever think back like man you know I could have really cashed in on my my followership retired well, um, so well that gets into sort of like what what is really possible and what isn't possible because everything's according to order. So it wasn't like Jesus would have just automatically died if there hadn't been some kind of reason for the body to die, you know. Um, but at the same time, you know, there's a pretty definite plan of what's going to go down. So it's all hypothetical, but um, I would think. If it wasn't that, there'd be some other God would be figuring out some other way to accomplish the mission, which which it doesn't seem like right. God is above rethinking things. If humans won't participate, because these different churches that have popped up over time was as, as Swedenborg describes God saying, "Okay, we're going to connect this way." Ooh, yeah. that's getting corrupt, and okay, we're going to connect this way. You know, so yeah. those are my thoughts. Yeah, that's good, and you know, in a certain way, um, aging is a kind of a slow torment you know i mean <laughs> there there is a kind of crucifixion aspect to it yeah so although it's a very theoretical question uh i imagine he would have yes grown old and died of natural causes but would have had that same transformation uh through some other you know something yeah. would have done that transformation and that's that's um a reason why people go through so much at the end of life often you know very difficult experiences and they yeah. experience despair and so on and i think it's a comfort to some people to think about what jesus went through when they're suffering like that like oh this is this is someone who understands yeah. what i'm going through empathy that the, the, can god even gain empathy yeah you know, to some extent who that's knows? right i don't know yeah it's so different than a than sort of this perfect shining god on a mountain somewhere or something yeah. you know somebody who's been in the dirt who's been where you are yeah. been through what you're going through uh, that's very powerful to me and the, the god would have you know i would imagine god is feeling everything we feel and going through everything with us you know if we're right. hurting god is hurting however i think it's probably different to th- to be god not knowing that you're god at times and going through something just like we do so there's Whew. that's probably a, a yeah. whole other thing there's a lot that's mind-boggling in this stuff yeah man yeah and and i'm sure we're boggling it up even more than it, it, <laughs> even needs, to it needs to be boggled. all right i think we have one more yeah okay 
This is from Zen Soul again on YouTube. I think Jesus' wisdom love came here as an earthly being to show us what we are or can become. He said, I am him as he is in me. What do you guys think? My own, I don't know how to put it into word. My own view is that uh, because he had full divinity within himself in a way that we don't, we have a finite soul. Uh, there's all sorts of things about us that are kind of unlimited, but we're not, you know, we're not, omnipresent we're not yeah. omniscient we're not omnipotent uh, that can only be one being i think there's endless room for growth and i think we do grow and grow and grow and grow in our lives and all through our lives we're, we're growing and developing and that continues after we die yeah i believe and um and so i do think he was showing us look yes you can do this you can be transformed i don't think we'll get exactly what he got i don't think our bodies will disappear from the earth plane or something you know the way that his did right uh, but I think that level of transformation is there if we want it. And he kind of shows with his life, it's a tough path. You know, it can, right. it can be involve some pain. That Being willing to go through that level of transformation has some suffering that comes with it. Yeah. Uh, but a great, great uh, outcome. And so I do think that's part of he was modeling a way of being. And you notice, does he ever complain? He never complains. Man. Don't bring that up because I complain yeah. all the time. So yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna have a so conflict. do I. I'm, I'm still finite in that respect. Uh, yeah. Um, well, so I think about it like the North Star. You can get direction. You know your direction yes. from it. You're never going to get. Swedenborg says, you know, angels, people who have progressed in the afterlife, are continually being perfected. That's so right. So we we can always be approaching. Yes. But but that's our nature. But we just but there's always more to more to go. And there's a almost infinite variety in the human race. So different people are going in yeah, different exactly. ways and becoming different things. So I think it's a reflection of this infinity that's yeah. there. Yeah, it's right. Very cool. Not like design. we're all going to pick up the same mannerisms as him. But no. But we we continue to let. What is love and wisdom? What is that core, the heart of Jesus, look like through these different people? There's and the link of one of individual with the lord or whatever we want to call him yeah is different than another person right with and and so it's very exciting to think of all those you know i think the lord is excited about that project of so many different people to yeah, man. to unite with and create something new that's never existed before and that's a great note to end on thank you so much for your questions and comments if you're watching this awesome. after the fact just really write awesome. down and we'll, we'll try to get to you then okay let's take a quick break and we'll come back and wrap up with our correspondences segment Okay, so this is where we try to do a sort of a meditative type exercise where instead of talking and thinking, we're going to be observing and feeling. And I'd mentioned, I, I gave it away, that we're, so we're doing correspondences as a segment so I can put that graphic up. We're going to talk about glass today. And correspondences is, is just this idea that, that everything we, we see or feel or interact with means something deeper like this is glass this is used to have water it's something we all know we all know its quality to a certain you know this is going to shatter um you can melt we know that but it's showing us something about something deeper mm. um and today we want to look at glass and what what is it what is it physically showing us spiritually mm. um uh, so Swedenborg dis talks about glass in a few different ways, but he talks about its the the clearness of it, its transparency, is like we're like a uh, human mind that's letting light through. You know, the light is in in that's right. Heat are coming from God, and if the more we get our negative stuff out of the way, the more that shines out. You know, you've probably felt that from somebody to be like, oh, this person, this is love coming right to me. That's you know? right. And you can feel when you're doing something love, like this is flowing through me. And so that we make the more we make our mind like glass, the more it can come through. So those are my initial thoughts. Do you have anything? Oh, just that's that's really great. Yeah. And when you when you think about what we were talking about about what Jesus did when he's transfigured on top of the mountain, he's just, even his clothes are shining. Yeah. You know, his face is shining. Uh, just this, he's just like broadcasting right. light. And that's exciting to think about with us too, because we can 
we can aspire to that, get rid of impurities and so on, and be able to radiate that light. So with those thoughts in mind, let's, we're just going to look at like half a minute of images of glass in different forms and just be, be keeping that in mind, looking at the physical thing and just see what kind of feelings or insights you get. And we'll be back to talk. Swedenborg ever mentions stained glass but it's interesting there that you see these different tiles who are are very different but yet together they create this in fact if you've ever been in a cathedral or something like that you, you know you have them all together and the light shining through all the different colors at once makes this like wow that's cool like, so yes. there's something about like you were describing before with uh, all these different people receiving God in a different way and through that you get this higher impact so mm. Everybody, thanks for hanging out. Um, thank you guys so much for tuning in. If you want to support this program and help it spread, help people find it, you could consider making a small tax-deductible donation to the Swedenborg Foundation. Just open up the description of this video, and there will be a link in there so that you can contribute. Thanks very much for considering it. Dr. Jonathan Rose, always a pleasure to have you on the show, and really glad to have you on for, for this subject, because I knew you'd have wonderful things to say, and you did. So I appreciate it very much, and we hope you can come back soon. Thanks, Curtis. All right, everybody, we'll be back uh, next week, so we'll see you then. Thank you.